Hey what is up guys, this is Eli for MoboxGraphics.com and in this video we will be creating an LED light show. So the parts we are going to cover is how to make this LED look, so the material for the light. And then we will be going over how to create a cloner object with a plane effector to create a light show. Also, if you just want to download this project file, you can find it on our Patreon page. The link will be in the description. Also, before I move on, I should mention where I got my inspiration from to make this. And that is from this video where people actually use Cinema 4D to drive a real life LED light show. So I really liked that video, but I wanted to see how I could do this in just Cinema 4D on its own. But for now, let's get started with the tutorial. So our first thing we are going to create is something that represents one LED light bulb. So the easiest thing to do is just creating a cube and we are going to add a fillet to this. Maybe the default option is just fine, but we are going to shrink this cube down a lot. So something close to maybe 10 centimeters on every side. Okay, so that is one LED, but now we want this in some kind of shape like the triangle we saw at the example video. So you can go up here and create any kind of spline, but just to stick with the video, we're going to create a star, for example, and we're going to decrease the points to three points, so that way we have a triangle. And now just rotate it while holding shift so it is straightened out. So that is 30 degrees in rotation. And now we are going to create a cloner object. So we can drag the cube inside of this cloner. But now it is cloning linearly, so we need to set it up so it clones around the triangle. So go to our cloner inside of the object tab. And we're going to set the mode to object. And now drag this star inside of this object field. This way you can see the clones are distributed over this spline but we're going to increase the count of clones so it fills up a bit more and also try to stop at a number where we have one cube at every corner of the triangle. Something like 27 will do I guess. So that is the first stage of our LEDs. Now let's already move on to the part where we create the material for the LEDs. So create a new material and open it up and we're going to disable the color channel and enable the luminance channel you can pick any color you like for now. I'm going with some kind of blue color. And we're going to increase the brightness of the luminance to 150%. So that is just a bit brighter than the default. We're also going to add some transparency to this. So it looks a little more realistic as we zoom in on an LED light bulb. But from a distance you will not notice much of a difference. But let's add it anyway. So enable the transparency and we're going to set the refraction preset to something like plexiglass. And right now you can see this very transparent so the color of the luminance is totally gone. So to fix that we're going to add a texture which will be a Fresnel. Also one last thing we're going to do to give this more of a glow is adding the glow channel. And we can decrease or maybe even disable the inner strength. So I'm just going to stick with something like 15%. Also the outer glow is way too strong right now, so we're going to decrease this to 200% and the radius can stay at 10 centimeters. So let's just take a look when we drag this on this cube and render. And you can see this is getting close to some kind of LED look, but it still looks a little flat, so we want more of a glow around it. But we can't do that with the glow channel like I wanted to. So luckily there is another option to add more glow to your scene. And that is going under the render settings and down here we are going to add an effect which will be glow. This one is very strong compared to the material glow so we need to keep the numbers at a very low setting. So let's just go to something like 2% maybe but we can increase the intensity to something like 50%. Let's take a look again. And this way you can see the glow is way stronger and gives us more of an effect where the cubes are emitting light. So maybe even for this one you can increase the size of the glow. It's up to you, it also depends how far the cubes are apart from each other. I think something like this looks okay. One more thing I like to do is adding a floor below all of this. But I do not recommend using the floor object because it will try to calculate all the shadows and reflections on an entire floor into infinity. 
So just having a plane that covers most of the area where you should have reflections is more than enough. So something like this will do. And we're going to create a new material for this one. So we can add some reflections to the floor. We need to make this one pure black so it blends with the background of the scene. And under the reflectance channel we are going to add a GGX reflection. And we're just going to increase the roughness to 20%. And down here under layer for now we're going to add a dielectric for now. So this way we have some kind of rough reflective floor. So let's render. And you can see we have some nice reflections at the bottom here. Okay, so that is how you can make an LED look. So maybe I'm going to increase the fillet even more. So it is a bit more rounded, but not too much. And that is all there is to creating an LED light on its own. But now we are going to move on to the LED light show. So a first thing we're going to do is creating more of these triangles. So that should be quite easy by creating a new cloner object. And you're going to drag the previous cloner inside of it. So maybe it is best to name these. So these will be the LEDs. And these will be the triangles. So right now this cloning upwards. I don't want that. I'm going to clone them in the Z axis. It's up to you how much you make of them and how far you space them apart. That's maybe a bit too much. Something like this will do for now. Next up we need to find a way to animate where we turn off the LEDs and turn them on. So a good way to do this is going to our MoGraph menu and going in the Effector tab and pick the Plane Effector. When you create this, this should affect one of the cloners we have. So let's take a look at the cloners and enable the Effector tab. And you can see both of them are empty. If you had one of the cloners selected when you created this plane effector, it should be down here. But in my case it was not, so let's drag this plane under the effectors, under the LED cloner. And now if you move this effector, nothing is really happening. So let's create a falloff. And right now it is set to infinite, but we want something like, maybe a cone would be nice. Let's rotate it, so it follows the direction. And if you move this one, you should see something. Or maybe you need to scale it up even more to have the real effect. Okay, this way you can see it. So right now it is set at the position deformation. So let's go to the parameters and disable the position because we want to turn them on and off and not move them. But to make these go on and off, it is just a bit more complicated than enabling something in here. The first thing we need to do is going back to our material and under the alpha channel, you need to enable it first, of course. And we're going to add a texture to this, which you can find under the MoGraph tab. And enable the color shader. You don't need to do anything with this, so just close this window. But now you can still see nothing is happening. But it is because we can now change the color of the cloner's anti-plane effector. So by default, the cloner color is set to white, which actually means that it is set to on. So white is on and black is off. We want them to be turned off by default, so set it to black for the cloner. And at the plane effector, you need to search for this tab. It should be under the parameter tab. So set the color mode to user defined. And you should see it is white by default, so that is okay. This means we should be able to turn on the lights by moving this effector. So you can see the corner ones are not turned on. So we need to scale up this cone. So we hit all of them. Also notice how you can't see the ones at the corners here. But if you render, you should actually be able to see them and much more even. So it is a good habit to always look at the render before moving and scaling this plane effector. So what we could do now is animate this cone. So let's get started at the beginning. Make a second keyframe at the ending. So one more thing you could do to make this more entertaining is animating the color of the luminance channel. So let's quickly do that for now. Make a keyframe at the beginning. So let's start with blue for example. And end up with some kind of more cyan or green look. Oops.
Okay, so let's make one more render to see how this looks. So right now you can see the LEDs that are in the distance are totally not visible because they are actually disabled. So what you can do is creating a duplicate of both of these cloners. I'm going to call them placeholders. Also make sure no effectors are inside of here. And of course to make them visible again we need to go to the transform tab and make sure the cloner color is set to white. But right now we have this bright material on it so we need to get rid of that. But first let's create a duplicate of this and you're going to disable the luminance channel and just enable the color channel. Make sure it is some kind of dark gray or almost black. We can also disable the alpha channel and the glow channel and that way it should be just fine. Let's drag this on top of the original material to change it. But now if you render you can see it is overlapping the other parts. So what we can do to make this work is going to the cube object on its own for the placeholder one and we're going to scale this down just a few millimeters. So if we render that again you can see it is not intersecting as much. Yeah, it still doesn't look like I intended it to so I'm just quickly going to check my preparation file. Maybe you can also decrease the reflectance of this. That way you have some kind of shape around the scene. But actually to be honest I like it even more when they are just hidden. It's up to you what you do with this. One more thing I would like to add to give it a more interesting look is a depth of field. So first thing we need to do is going under the render settings and changing the renderer from standard to physical. That way we can go to this physical option and turn on the depth of field. So that's the first thing. Now we need to create a camera which will generate the depth of field. So get inside of it by clicking this button. And we're just going to set up the camera at a good position like so. And now you need to go under this physical tab and we're going to set the f-stop to something like 0.25 or 0.3. So that's a very small number but otherwise we will not see much of a depth to it. And now one more thing we need to do is telling what should be sharp and what should not be sharp. So let's go outside of the camera view. That way you can see it in the viewport. And this is actually quite simple. All you need to do is selecting this middle point and dragging it so it lines up with the part we want to be sharp. So let's set it something close to the beginning. So this way if you render like this, it should be quite sharp. But if we go all the way to the last LEDs, it should be more blurred. If it is not very blurry, you need to decrease the f-stop even more. You can even go down to 0.1 or even lower if you want to. So that's up to you. So I'm quickly going to render this just to see if this looks alright. Make sure you set the frame range to preview range. So you can see this quick render looks just fine. Only at the bottom here I can see the plane is not big enough. So let's go out of here and just make it wider. So it covers the whole part at the bottom. There are just a few more tips I would like to give you guys if you want to go more advanced with this. So first thing is if you want to give some specific parts of the triangles a different color for example or want more movements and animations on this light show is that you can create multiple plane effectors of course. So let's create a second one by just duplicating the plane effector. And let's take a different fall off so maybe let's go with a sphere. I'm also going to disable the animation on this and let's just randomly set it up somewhere at the middle and I'm also going to scale this down. So now we have these two intersecting with each other but I want these LEDs to have a different color so we need a duplicate of the material and let's just change the color. I'm also going to delete the animation on this otherwise it will not work. Let's set it to red for example. So now I need something that holds this material, which we can do by just duplicating the cloners again once more. And I'm going to change the color of the original. But right now it is intersecting with all the clones. So now we need to make sure the new plane effector we created is inside of the effectors of these new LED clones. So let's delete the old plane effector and drag in the new one. 
But if you render, you can see it is just overlapping with the original ones. So one more thing you need to do is the same thing as we did with the placeholders. So for those, we made them smaller, but now we need to make them bigger. So it is overlapping the original ones. So just adding like one millimeter on every side is just enough. And that way you can see it is overlapping the other ones. Also, one last thing I would like to show you guys is how to set up a gradient on Holy Cloner. Like you start with red on this side and end up with blue on that side. It is not as easy as you think it would be. So for now I'm just going to disable some of this stuff so it is not in our way. Maybe we can also make sure the LEDs are visible for now. And I'm going to get rid of this material on top of it. Let's go with this one maybe. But for this we don't want a flat color, we want the actual gradient. So add a gradient texture. And as I said, let's start with red and end with blue, just as an example. And we're going to drag this on top of the triangles cloner, because we want to affect this whole series of triangles. So now if you zoom in, you can see it is applying the texture on every cube on its own. That's not what we want. So the first thing we need to do is making sure the texture tag is enabled or selected. And go down here to projection and change this to flat. This way you can see it is applying the gradient on the whole cloner on its own, but not like we wanted to. So let's go in the texture mode and you can see how this flat projection is happening. So let's try to rotate this and see what happens. Maybe we also need to scale this up. And this way you can see it is starting at this point and ending at that point. So let's try to make it just long enough, but not too big. And that way you can see we have a nice gradient where we can apply the effectors on. So let's go back to black for this one. And you should be able to see if we move this plane effector that the gradient is still being applied to it. Okay, so that is actually all there is to it. I just showed you guys the basics of this. I know it is kind of complicated, but if you get a hold of it, it is really easy to make a lot of fun animations with this. I'm going to show you guys some animations on the screen right now. It are just some quick GIFs I generated before making this video. Also, if you like anything you see right here, you can also find these files on our Patreon page. And as always, I really hope you learned something new today, and I hope to see you in the next video.